Hello, Atlanta Real Estate Nation, and welcome to the one and only Atlanta Real Estate Podcast. We're bringing you the insider tips, tricks, and secrets to buying, selling, or investing in Metro Atlanta. Are you ready? Let's go! All right, Atlanta Real Estate Nation, how's everybody doing today? Good to be with you guys. I love that bumper music, you guys. It just gets me fired up in the morning, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty cool. Hey, I'm uh, Terry Berger, uh, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Brad Martin and Oleg Gateman. We're happy to be here. How are you guys doing this morning? Good morning. Doing good. All right, everybody's good. Everybody's good. You have a good weekend? Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome weekend. What'd you do? Anything fun? Did a little bit of running outside, my friend. Oh, that's right. Brad's the runner. How far do you go, Brad? Uh, almost five miles, man, when I take off. Five wow. miles. Yeah. Nice. That's I don't know my name point. when I finish. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever run a marathon or anything? No, uh, 5Ks, 10Ks. Okay. You ever want to run a marathon? No. Only if I can be in the front. Yeah. I tell people, if you see me running, you better call 911. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I am, uh, I'm not the big runner. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, uh, not that we have time to tell a funny story, but a year ago, my son had a birthday party, and his whole thing was, Dad, I want to have an airsoft party. Okay, cool. No problem, son. Let's have an airsoft party. I didn't know what airsoft was, you know? And do you guys know what airsoft is? No. So there are these little BBs. They're plastic. I mean, bigger than BBs, maybe the size of a... I don't know. But they're small. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're putting this pressurized gun, and you shoot them at people, and they hurt like crazy. Welts and all kinds of stuff going on. And so he's like, Dad, I want to have an airsoft party. Okay, no problem. So we have all his friends over and do this airsoft party. And uh, I'm rolling over, uh, trying to get away from these kids shooting me. And I roll over, and this little BB went into some soft tissue on my knee. I mean, my knee hasn't been right in, in a year. I mean, this is going on a year and two months now. So wow. I used to play a lot of tennis, and now I just sit on the couch and eat potato chips. You know? Wow. <laughs> so, I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't see you like that. Oh, gosh, <laughs> man. It stinks, you know? Getting old, it's terrible. It's <laughs> terrible. But uh, anyway, hey, guys, this is episode two. Um, and if you want to check out our podcast, uh, AtlantaRealEstatePodcast.com uh, forward slash episode two, or you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play and all that stuff. We'll be there too. Um, and um, let's see, if you like what you hear, we'd love, love, love for you to leave a, um, a review on iTunes. Give us a five-star review. We're also on YouTube. So in case you want to look at our ugly mugs, uh, we're here. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, uh, we, are, uh, we are a team of uh, highly skilled real estate agents with about 30 years' experience. And, uh, We're this, just having fun. That's right, just having fun. <laughs> this was born out of one of our team meetings. We had so much fun together. I'm like, guys, we need to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, we handle the North Atlanta marketplace, anywhere from uh, Cherokee, Paulding, Cobb, North Fulton County, down into Buckhead even. And then, um, and then outside of that area, if you kind of like um, what you're hearing and you want us to find you an agent that thinks in the same things we do, we'll find you an agent somewhere south of the city, east of the city, in town, whatever you want. We, we network with the top producers all over the city of Atlanta. But hey, today's topic is going to be awesome. You get to drop in on what realtors think. And I'm going to ask these guys a bunch of questions. And uh, this has to do with uh, getting your offer accepted when it's a multiple offer situation. You know, what do you guys think? I mean, let, I'm going to throw out a price range and you tell me what percentage of those houses receive a multiple offers. You guys ready? Okay, 150 to 200,000. If you could all find, day long. If you could find one of those. All day long. Uh, how many, what, what, what percentage do you think get multiple offers in that price range? I would say probably 75 to 80% of them. And depends, of course, on the area. If it's a yeah. hot area, then I'd say brother's correct. Yeah, 75, 80%. I, was, I mean, we've sold one recently, um, and uh, I think we had four or five offers on that house. Yeah, so 150 to 200. Anything under 200,000 is just absolutely screaming hot because it's that first time home buyer uh, price range. Okay, let me uh, let me throw out another price range for you. Um, two to 250. Extremely hot as well. As far as multiple offers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're you're probably coming down to around probably 40 to 50 percent of them. Okay. Yep. I wish there was a way to track them, don't you, on the MLS? Like if, if, if we're could... talking about good schools, um, good rated schools, then. And the house, the the very important if the house is priced right, if the price 
the price is right, anything under 300,000 is getting multiple offers. In the good schools, under 300,000. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready? The next one. Three to 400,000. Let me throw a caveat. Three to 400,000 with marginal schools. Not getting multiple offers. Not getting multiple offers. The only thing that would uh, change that dynamic sum is the uh, condition of your home. Yeah. And I think maybe um, in certain hotter parts of Atlanta that the schools may not be quite rated as high, you might might be able to get some multiple offers generated a little bit closer to the city. Um, but, uh, but I think out in the suburbs... You're probably correct. Okay, uh, four to five hundred thousand. Let's just go four to six hundred thousand in uh, top school districts in, you know, let's say, East Cobb High School districts in West Cobb, Alpharetta, Roswell. Um, those parts of North Atlanta that we really know about the schools, Peachtree City. Um, what do you think? Four to six hundred. They're still getting possibly they're still getting multiple offers, but um, but not as many by any means at the other price. Uh, smaller price range. Correct. Yeah, so uh, multiple offers are big in all the price ranges, really, and, and these guys are right. I mean, as you uh, increase the price range, the multiple offers do tend to taper off. And believe it or not, I mean, even in uh, around where we are, uh, the North Atlanta marketplace, a million plus isn't necessarily a hot market. You know, I mean, you think about a million bucks, okay? If you're a million dollar home buyer, and with, uh, there's not that many of them out there, but if you're one, you've got your pick. You can go up into Ackworth and buy a place in Governor's Town Club that'll blow your doors off at 7,000 square feet. You can go to East Cobb, buy a million-dollar house in Indian Hills Country Club. You know, that's going to get you 5,000 square feet. You can go in town into Buckhead and get yourself your choice of condos um, and a really nice home up to a million bucks. It's going to be a lot smaller, but your choices to buy a nice house in that price range are endless. Um, and you can almost, almost have the entire metro area to pick from for the most part. So it just depends what you're looking for. Always. Exactly. Yep. All right. So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about multiple offers today. Um, with multiple offers being so rampant in a hot market like this, it's important that you set yourself apart. And that's kind of what we're, gonna, we're basically going to argue. <laughs> you get to sit in on some arguments today. Kind of, we're going to approach it from a seller's perspective, a buyer's perspective, and an agent's perspective. And uh, we're going to kind of open some things up here. So I, I, I've, uh, as an agent in my career, um, I've gotten a lot of these uh, letters to sellers, right? So I've got a listing. And there's multiple offers on this listing, and, uh, and, and I get this letter. Dear Mr. Seller, I have a family of five. We love your home. We want to, be, we want to raise our kids in this house, and we want to, you know, and, and you get those letters, right? And um, do they work? What do you guys think? I mean, we're in real estate every day. This is our, our job. Do those emotional letters work? They do work. Um, it's, uh, you've got to make it personal if you're going to write a letter. It doesn't need to sound just like a, a generic letter that you might be submitting to uh, two or three different uh, homes that you might be making offers on. You've got to make it generic to that home, to that community. Um, also, um, I have a uh, client I was working with that not only did we submit a letter, but they submitted a photo of their entire family uh, so they could just put that personal touch to it. And um, the offer was uh, accepted, and I truly think that weighed on it. I have to agree with uh, what Brad said, but they don't work in every situation because in some situations, seller just doesn't care. Seller wants the bottom line to be where he wants it. And if you give me a letter that, with a picture of a family and your dog, you know, it might not make any difference in certain situations. And the only thing I would change on that is, um, as a buyer... You don't know if it's going to work or not. Just like Oleg said, it might not make a difference to the seller. But the thing is, you have to make your best offer. And if your best offer uh, is not only your, your price, the, the way you're going in with your loan, your financing, uh, whether you submit a letter, whether you submit a photo of your family, what is it that's going to be part of your offer that, may, that made it be accepted? Yeah, and I think uh, I think those letters are great. Uh, they can work um, sometimes. We've got to be careful as realtors that we don't 
we don't coerce our people to write them because um, I don't know if it, for federal ho- fair housing and all that stuff, how all that plays out. But if the seller wants to write an offer, certainly they can bring that offer um, or bring, bring that letter and ask, ask the agent what they think, and that agent can kind of weigh in. I, I do think they work. I think in some cases, like Oleg says, if it's a very pragmatic seller, it's not going to make that big of a difference. But typically, if you have a – let's say you have a husband and wife seller um, – and uh, uh, one of them is very pragmatic. The other one's probably very emotional. And so they can kind of play off each other. I mean, it's, uh, making offers a lot ha- has a lot to do with social dynamics and trying to figure out every piece of the, of the puzzle that you don't know. Um, well, I mean, you know, kind of an aside, I love dessert, you guys. I mean, I love uh, going to Brewster's and getting a banana split, even though it's not good for me anymore. But, um, well, it was never good for me, anymore. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was never good for me. But, you know, you turn 40, over 40, it's definitely not good for you. Uh, and so, you know, if somebody's going to give me, show me a, a banana split and they're going to show me a, a plate of spinach, I'm going to more than likely, my gut instinct wants to choose that banana split every time. And so I guess where I'm going with that is, you know, your contract can put you ahead of the pack. I mean, you can have a spinach contract or you can have a banana split contract. And uh, when you're in a multiple offer situation, you definitely want to be the banana split in that situation. So uh, what are some of the contract hacks that we can utilize as our knowledge as agents in getting those multiple offer situations to look like banana splits versus spinach salad? (laughs) That's a Nice. Uh, good question. Um, well, do you want to start? or? Sure. I mean, Go ahead. Uh, a multiple offer. Um, I want my client to come in um, with, um, we have talked about before, escalation clauses. That if there's multiple offers, um, if the home is listed, let's just say 300, and we're going to make an offer, and that offer is going to be raised $1,000 above the highest offer that they might received from someone else, and it has an escalation clause not to excuse exceed X amount. So you're saying I can, as a buyer, I can go in and put some sort of clause in place called, I guess, escalation clause, right? Correct. I can put that clause in place that says no matter what this other seller may get, right? They've got my letter <laughs> with my Christmas card with my picture on it, right? And, 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 and a dog. A, and a dog, yeah. And, uh, and a cat, maybe. Um, <laughs> don't want to exclude the cat people listening right. out there. Um, or no pets at all. If you hate pets, you know, and whatever. So uh, <laughs> you're saying that I can put something that says I can pay 1000 2000 3000 over what anybody else gets. Correct. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, the escalation clause is uh, something you can... Uh, uh, add on to the contract as an exhibit, uh, which basically states that you're offering, and this the terms are negotiable, but you're offering, your client as a buyer is offering uh, a certain amount of dollars above what the highest offer comes in, and then it limits it at a certain point. It also makes it easier for the seller that there's not going to be a lot of um, um, back and forth uh, as far as contracts going back and forth trying to come to an agreement. They've received several offers, and they have one offer that they know immediately is going to escalate up to trump all the others. Done deal. Yeah. Awesome. That's a really good tip. That's a good tip and trick for people listening out there. Uh, If your agent doesn't know how to do that. Or heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. If your agent doesn't know how to do that, uh, you need to find a new agent maybe. I'm not sure. But a a seasoned agent is going to really understand the ins and outs of that contract and try to f- figure something out. There's some other things you can do inside your contract as well. Common sense kind of stuff. Um, you know, um, you know, I'm a, let's say I'm a, I'm a, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to be the buyer, right? I'm a CPA, very detail oriented. And I see everything that's wrong with this house. And let's assume it's a really nice house. Okay. Been new roof, newer HVAC, water heaters updated, Hardwood floors have just been refinished, and the paint looks nice. And the master bedroom and the guest bedroom bedrooms have all been redone. And, oh, by the way, the kitchen's remodeled as well, right? Great house, right? It's a great house, but there are little flaws, you know, that I see in, in, it, in it. And, and, uh, and I'm going to nitpick everything. And multiple offers, you know, what, what, what are your, what's your guidance, your, your advice to me? Well, in a multiple offer situation, if you want your offer to stand out from the rest, we need to make a clean uh, offer a uh, clean offer will 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 have uh, minimum special stipulations in there, and uh, due diligence usually nine to twelve days 
uh, that you can negotiate, but I usually tend to offer seven to nine just to be on a on a on a preferred side, I guess. And then, uh, of course, the uh, special stipulation, uh, not the special stipulation, the, the financial contingency and the uh, appraisal contingency, those kick in. So if you limit those to under 21 days or at 21 days, you definitely will have a better advantage in the multiple offer situation. Brad, where's the, um, uh, Oleg mentioned financing. Tell me about financing in multiple offer situations. You know, what, what, uh, what are some things there that can set us apart? Well, as far as financing, um, several different ways. Uh, no financing to where you're coming in with a hard cash offer mm-hmm. um, versus uh, conventional FHA or VA. Um, obviously, if someone's coming in with a cash offer um, versus uh, other offers that might be conventional FHA or VA, cash offer is going to be the way to go for sure. Okay, so if you're saying that I have, um, I'm going to submit a clean offer, right? So let's just assume we're going to submit a clean offer. And, and, and a clean offer, just um, as a quick aside, you know, you, as a buyer, you know, the, the, the strength and, and the power in being a, a good negotiator is understanding 360 degrees around any situation, right? So if I'm at the produce stand at the Marietta Farmer's Market and I understand that these bananas look a little bit rotten, now, am I going to pay what I would pay at the grocery store? Or am I going to pay a little bit less? I'm going to try to negotiate less because I understand the, yeah. the value of the banana, right? And so in, in, in a real estate market, if you think like a seller, do you think you'll be a better negotiator? If you're a buyer? Yes. If you understand the seller's need, absolutely. You're going to understand you're going to be a better negotiator. And so a clean contract in a multiple offer situation, like Oleg said, you're not going to ask for termite bonds. You're not going to ask for home warranties. You might be able to do that after the inspection and that sort of thing. But uh, you're not going to ask for it if it's the house you want. And I always used to ask my clients, hey, what would happen if you didn't get this house? And then I would shut up and listen, you know? And if they said we'd be heartbroken, then I'm like, okay, then this is the house that you want. Let's go for it. And, uh, you know, the good thing about multiple offers, I, I've seen people pull back and say, well, I'm not going to submit. I'm not going to get involved in a multiple offer situation. And so they pull back. And, you know, my, my take on that is you want to buy a house that has multiple offers on it. Why? I mean, because that's the hot house. It's the hot house. And do you think in 10 years when you go to sell that house, it'll be a hot house? Yes. More than likely. Yeah, more than likely. You know, yes. if you buy something everybody else wants, more than likely later on down the road. And if you have a want. good agent who knows their contracts, you can probably win that multiple offer situation and not only put in the offer in the multiple offer pot. Yep. So, all right, let's talk about financing then. Okay, so we let, I, I'm going to assume we have three different buyers. Buyer A, buyer B, buyer C. And each of them are going to have different financing. All right, so this is where you guys listening out there in podcast land, you get to listen and drop in because these guys are going to shoot out what they think is important. So if, if Brad is representing the list, the seller, and Oleg is representing the seller, and I bring, I'm the buyer, maybe the buyer's agent, and I'm going to bring three offers. One's going to be all cash. One's going to be a VA loan, and one's going to be a conventional loan. And Brett and I have different houses. Different houses. Okay. Yep, different houses. And you're going you're gonna to react based on the way you'd react with a client, okay? okay? And so you got three offers. VA is 100%. It's for military and ex-military. Um, you have a conventional loan, which is straight up, you know, normal run-of-the-mill loan. And you've bank got, loan. And then you've got cash. Yeah, bank loan. And then you've got cash. Somebody with a wad of money sitting in their bank, and they're going to pay cash for it. All right, so I'm going to, and let's just assume we can't negotiate them. They're all going to be the same, just for the sake of simplicity. They're all going to be the same. I'm going to bring you a VA, full price offer, um, conventional full price offer, and a cash full price offer. Brad. No which, FHA? No FHA. Nope, not at this point. What do you think, Brad? Cash all the way. Cash money, baby. Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Cash uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in that instance is the king. Okay. All things being the same, pur- purchase price, closing date, everything, yeah. right? Okay. All right, good. Uh, let me uh, let me throw a curveball. Again, uh, these are firm offers coming your way. We got a full price VA, a full price conventional, and a, and a cash offer that's $20,000 less. What do you do? I am uh, 100% taking the um, conventional. Okay, I'm going to ask you why here in a second, Brad. How about you, Oleg? In this situation, um, I could probably go with either conventional or VA. 
uh, reason, should I jump into the reason or a little later? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, conventional 20% down, it's a very good loan. Um, it's not, nothing's guaranteed, but it's a very good loan package. Uh, VA, uh, a lot of their programs are pre-approved uh, or, 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 yeah, they're pre-approved, basically guaranteed loan. So with a guaranteed loan, sometimes it's, it's uh, better than going with something that people need to still submit the documentation for, like a conventional loan. So that's why I'm, if all of the terms are 100% the same, I possibly would go with either or, just depending depending on the feel from the other agent. And my, my uh, difference on that is that uh, conventional versus VA, uh, both of them being the same, is um, you're, I'm going to refer to a conventional loan would be a cleaner loan. Um, anytime you are presenting an offer, you want your offer to be the cleanest, the one that has the um, uh, best possible chance of going through without any bumps. And when you're looking at a VA loan, uh, obviously fantastic loans, but uh, VA loans, um, they're going to go in and have to meet, uh, being the home, have to meet certain requirements. And uh, the uh, seller could have some more out of pocket to possibly bring their home up to meet VA standards where that does not apply with a conventional loan. So I think a conventional is going to be just a little smoother in this case. Okay, yeah. So see, um, if you're listening out there in podcast land, you're going to get, if we put 10 realtors in here, they would all have different uh, opinions on this as well. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw another curveball. Brad, your client is a 20-year uh, military vet, um, served three tours in Iraq, and you got a VA loan coming your way. So the VA and the conventional are all the same. The cash is still $20,000 less, okay? Oleg, uh, same thing for you. <laughs> what do you do? What do I do? Well, First thing I do, even... I will present the offers to the sellers. Yeah, absolutely. We have to, right? Yeah. We have to present all offers to the sellers and um, present exactly what you found out from the buyers because uh, that's also very pertinent in uh, in a multiple offer situation, in any situation for this for your client that, that you're representing. In this case, I'm representing a seller. I want to know who my buyers are, who my agent is who, on the other side, mm. who I'm working with so I can help you, uh, the seller, make the right decision. And uh, if I understood that correct, Terry, um, I've got a, a buyer that's a VA and uh, going up against multiple offers to where they're cash and conventional, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, this would be a case where I would probably uh, suggest for um, my client uh, the service that uh, he's did with our country to um, possibly write a letter mm -hmm. that could... Um, You're representing a seller. Yeah, you're representing the seller, sorry. Representing the seller. Yeah. Uh, representing the seller if that VA come in with a letter like that attached, letting me know the background service that he's done for the country, then uh, that could have an impact. Yeah, I mean, so I, I guess what we want to convey to you is it, it depends on not just the agent, right? The agent, we, we present the offers to the seller, and then the seller asks us what we think. And then uh, we give our opinion based on our own experiences, right? If I've had four bad situations with VA appraisals, for example, and, and pretty smooth sailing with conventional appraisals, I'm going to choose, I'm going to give advice based on my pain points, right? I had situations different with both. I had great VA uh, inspections, and then I had really bad uh, uh, conventional loan appraisals. So yeah. it just depends on how the story unfolds it does and it that's right it is a story that unfolds and i mean it, a lot of it has to do with not just the price right the terms of the other part of the contract could be huge if your kids are finishing out school and the the cash buyer wants to be in in two weeks and that's an impossibility for you but the the conventional borrower is okay waiting until school gets out then that all plays into a seller's decision and so if you're in a multiple offer situation, I would say uh, the first thing your agent should do is call that agent and say, what do they need? What are the needs of the seller that my buyer can know going into the negotiation so that we can, we can be um, proactive. proactive, proactive instead of reactive? Correct. Because the proactive agents are the ones that win. Yeah, and, th and that right there, just adding what you're saying there, Terry, that gets back to when another podcast as far as uh, choosing the right agent. Yeah. That scenario right there is truly your agent working for you. Yep, absolutely. I remember we had one last year 
there were 20 offers on this house. It was in a really hot area of Walton School District and in a, a low price range where multiple offers were commonplace, but 20 offers. And uh, we got ours to win. And uh, I felt so good about that. You know, I mean, I know we're all competitive and everybody wants to win, you know, and, and we want our clients to win. And uh, you know, there's nothing worse than submitting a contract with 20 offers and you finish second, you know. Absolutely. I mean, second yeah. and 20 is the same, right? I mean, there's only one winner and yeah. winning is big if that's the house they're supposed to get. So, and I, I'm going to jump kind of on what Brad said too about agent experience. I mean, if you've been in the, if, if you've got an agent with some experience, um, you know, the odds are that agent's going to know a bunch of people. And um, one of the things that on our team that's really important is, and multiple offers, we always ask, who's the other agent? Do I know the other agent? What's their track record? You know, if I know, um, if one of my buddies who's an agent brings me a contract, I know my agents, that agent is solid, is a rock. And so knowing all the situations around a contract is huge, even who the agent is and even who the lender is. And if you, if you all think that it should be just subjective and, and unbiased, it just it, the world doesn't work that way. And it doesn't work that way in real estate either. It should be fair, but we don't know fair because if I don't know Joe Schmo, who's a rookie agent, has been in the business a month, but I know that this guy's been in the, the business for 25 years and every experience I've had with him has been positive. Who do you think I'm going with? Not Joe Schmo. No way. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to try to get the terms that my, my client wants with that experienced agent that I know will, will get me to closing because he hasn't ever disappointed me or she hasn't disappointed me. All right, gang. I mean, we're kind of coming up against it. Guys, you want to add anything else in multiple offers that we didn't really kind of hit on? No, I think we covered it. Uh, very good. The only thing I would add in multiple offers is that um, when you ha- are making an offer on a home, another thing that would make you stand out is do you currently have another home to sell? Um, if, if you don't, then that obviously makes you shine more because you don't have anything that, that's uh, depending on that. Um, if you do have another home to sell, what's going to make you shine on a multiple offer is you want to make sure that that listing agent, uh, if you're the buyer's agent, you want to make sure that that listing agent knows the stage that your contract is under. So if you're making an offer on a home and you have a home to sell and it's under contract, you want to make sure that that listing agent knows that your home is under contract, you're already out of due diligence, you have possibly already passed appraisal. You're that much further in the process versus some versus another offer they might get that's strictly um, saying we're under contract. But that's a whole different uh, topic now. If you're bringing in, uh, pulling in the contingency of a buyer's other home selling, uh, then I would say in the multiple offer situation, if your uh, buyer's agent knows what they're doing, I would recommend to my clients not to put in a uh, contingency knowing that the fact that their house is already under contract and went through the due diligence period and just having a possibly longer um, uh, convention, um, not appraisal contingency, but the financial contingency in place. Yeah, I mean, I think we're getting into, I mean, we could spend an hour and a half talking about the the, uh, great details. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, that's when things get complicated, right? And a good agent wins. I mean, Mm -hmm. a good agent is always going to talk you through that stuff. If you don't have a good agent, uh, let us use our agent finding service. We network with the top producing agents all over the city of Atlanta. We serve the North Atlanta marketplace uh, come from Buckhead North, kind of 285, Roswell, Alpharetta, East Cobb, West Cobb, uh, East Paulding, South Cherokee, that northwest quadrant of the city as well. And uh, we can help you there if you're interested. And um, But if not, if there's anything we can do for you, please reach out. And if you wouldn't mind, if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review on iTunes. We would really appreciate it. And uh, give us a nice review on YouTube as well. Hey, one thing I'm going to throw in here, guys, is uh, we didn't even talk about this, but you know we can waive due diligence, right? And we can put non-refundable earnest money down. There's all kinds of other tips and tricks that, uh, that we can learn, but we don't want this podcast to run over 30 minutes. I have 37 seconds, so we're going to close it out. This is episode two, AtlantaRealEstatePodcast.com. If you want to search for houses, every house is in Atlanta is at CallAtlantaHome.com. Thanks so much for hanging with us, and I hope you have a great day. Have a great day. Take care. All right. Episode two wrapped up. Wrapped up. Boom. Boom.